Hello and welcome to In 20 with me, Roshan Ryan. And don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube page, our Facebook and Instagram account as well. And show us some love. I promise you, you'll be up close and personal with your favorite personalities right here on this show. And kicking things off, we have the one, the only, Dominic Matteo. Dominic, it is so good to see you, my brother. How are things with you? Oh, good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for all the nice messages from everybody that I've had. Um over the past few months. It's been a difficult time, but I'm still here. I'm battling on and um, I'm looking forward to hopefully at some point get back playing some football or watching some football. That's what we all want. Um, obviously, when things are safe to do that. But yeah, I think we're all missing a bit of football. A bit of sport. I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, I, football was my life for the past 10 years as a TV host uh, with Astro in Malaysia. You played the game. You lived the dream. I see you got a Michael Owen jersey behind you. You got yeah. a Keane jersey behind you as well. We all love football. But you, right now, would you encourage uh, for the return of the Premier League? I think it's a really difficult question because um, I'm sure that most of the players, I'd probably say 90% would be wanting to do that but I think there is a to be 10 percent I would have thought that probably want to try and do the right thing by the fre friends and family and it's a very difficult situation and it's one that I think you have to monitor very carefully and I think with the playing staff um you know in the world the, the, all the players you have to play you know the managers and stuff there's some difficult decisions that have to be made and I'm sure with the the people that you know I know within football, they'll they'll make the right calls when they need to, and it's um, important that we do get it right. That you know if we are going to start when they're talking about starting, that we have to make sure that everyone's all, all right to do that. If not, then we don't do it. Simple as that. And that's the hardest question. As a host, when I used to work as a as a host for the Premier League. If I didn't work, I didn't get paid. So if if you were to ask me as a father, I would say yes, I want to go back and work because I got to pick up a paycheck uh, to take care of my family. But at the same time, if I go out, as you mentioned, I had, you know, a likelihood of picking up uh, the COVID nineteen and bringing it back home. And I'm so sorry to do this to you, Dom. But as a friend, I don't want to ask you. But as a host, I have to ask you: Would you want if your kids were playing right now? Would you want them to go out seeing your condition right now? You know, um, just try that toss think, of a coin. Yeah, I think I think for me personally, because because of my you know my my condition and what 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 I've been up, you know what, what's happened to me over the past few months, it's it's very easy for me to answer that at the moment because I haven't been brilliant. But for other people around the world, it's a different scenario. They you know you know they will be in a healthier position than what I am and a stronger position, especially all the football clubs. Um, but there still is that in the back of the mind. If one person, you know, one of the high-profile players was to come come down with the COVID virus, then it's going to affect the whole the whole, the whole situation because that would then, I think, make the, the the bigger bodies, the higher bodies around the world of football, you know, maybe listen a bit more. So it's it's a really difficult difficult situation for all the clubs around the world, and you know, uh, you know, we're all watching carefully to what how they're doing it. You know, in Germany, they've already started, so. You know, I'm sure the Premier League, you know, the one that we watch the most, um, follow the closest, will be will be trying and, and, and trying to get the players back safely as possible into, into work and, and then they can get on with the, with, with the football again because that's what we all want to we all want to see. But obviously, again, speaking from my own point of view as well, when everything's safe for everyone to do so. You know, let's talk about you and your journey. What's happened to you over the past few months? I'm quite fortunate to know you as a friend and you're quite vigorous on WhatsApp, sending us all these funny jokes and things like that. And when it stopped, I, I remember messaging you and saying, Dom, are you okay? I couldn't, I, I didn't get a reply. And then a week went by and then suddenly uh, all the news stories broke, the websites broke the story that you had to undergo an emergency surgery. And my heart broke when I saw this picture of you, Dom, uh, you know, with, with all the, what you're seeing right now on the screen, what was going through your mind post-surgery when it, all you know you had some time to yourself to think about it i think um i think it happened that fast for me that obviously i was rushed into you know an operation pretty quickly uh, things were pretty bad you know my wife had to make all the decisions and uh, with my mum and dad who came to see me as well and it was a really tough time because you know when you're having to make them decisions on behalf of the family um just really stood up 
and was counted and, and really helped us all of us as a family through this um, and I'm forever and forever thankful for that I mean I must say everyone's helped me in that in that in that in, in that scenario but I think overall it was just a massive shock to me and, and when you when you get an illness like this and it takes you so oh, it's so hard to to understand what's just happened to you it did take me a few months to realize what day it was to be honest um because my memory had lot i'd lost so much memory i'd lost um you know just just day-to-day -day basic stuff washing you know brushing my teeth you know me remembering to do stuff was, was was getting hard for me and luckily it's getting a little bit easier as we go along but it was just, it's a tough road uh, you know anyone who, who's been down that route um it's still ongoing for me i've got to live with this going forward and i have to be respectful because it's a very dangerous thing that i have but i'm very confident that we, we can manage this the best way possible for me and my family to give us um a longer life going forward because that's that's what we all want and you know I, i'm i'm thankful i'm still alive and i'm you know i want to get back going i want to get back working um there's a lot of stuff that you know i need to get through first but positivity in life at the moment is, is, a, is a word that we need to start using a lot more of because there's been so much negativity at the moment um a little bit of positivity does help and that's how i'm trying to keep myself going day in day out because there is tough days um, and that's all i do keep telling myself things will get better you know i think a lot of people around the world are, are doing the same thing that's brilliant and i tell you what was shocking is when you mentioned that you'd forgotten things do you remember i spoke to you about but four weeks or so after your surgery and i, I was talking to you and i was doing my part and trying to make you laugh mm -hmm. And uh, then you told me a, a really funny story about Neil Ruddock, who gave you a call, and he asked you a question. Do you remember what you told me? Uh, you, do you know what? I probably don't. That, that. Razor's, <laughs> told me, Razor's told me that many questions of recent, and obviously, I've been speaking with Razor quite a bit. He's, you know, he's not been too great himself with with health over the past uh, past few months and stuff. So it's just good to see he's back on the recovery as well. But you know, great great seeing that picture of obviously Nelson Mandela and. Me and Razor and a few of the boys, Johnny Barnes organised that, and you know it's a great photo. Stevie Nick in the background, the Rob, the Rob Jones, Brucey there, you David James in the background. Great picture and great memories, and uh, I think that's one of those days when you get to meet someone like Nelson Mandela, very inspirational. I think for me, I've I've been using a lot of stuff um, that has been helping me inspirationally, and 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 thinking about things and motivating myself to get back to where to where I was thinking about football all the time. I mean, all you know, what, all I can do at the moment is is get my memory back, think about the games I played in, all the, all the games that I did okay mm -hmm. in and the ones, the ones I didn't do so well in because you have to look at everything. And I think for me, it's about day-to-day -day and getting back to where I was. I mean, you know me yourself and you know yep. what I'm like. I, like. I like to be active. I like to get back working. It's very difficult and I'm, you know, I'm so pleased that you, you guys have given me the opportunity again to speak on a platform. And it's, it's it's brilliant because this is what I need for me to get better and get forward and go forward. Sorry, this is this is perfect, and uh, you know I can't thank you guys enough for for doing this again for me. Dom, you don't need to thank me, Dom. You're my friend, and more importantly, you're an inspiration. Like you mentioned, you're a warrior right now. For you to come back from what you've gone through is simply unbelievable. But two things: did you get up close and personal with uh, Nelson Mandela? Did you talk to him? Did he share anything? Like give you any insights and something inspirational? Well, John Barnes actually had the, uh, had dinner with with um, with him, and I think John was totally in awe, like the rest of us. Um, I think I think with 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 John with John being around everyone as well, because obviously um, he was so famous. John Barnes over 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 in um, South Africa, um, him and Nelson Mandela really hit it off, and they had a really good relationship. He really liked his sport, and it was great to see the interaction um, with John. And Nelson Mandela, because you know we're talking about two you know real legends of, of the world, and it was great to see another side of, of that, and another side of John, and you know his, the, the caringness he had towards Nelson Mandela and what he what he'd done for him and for everyone else going forward. I think it was just an amazing opportunity, one that I never thought I would get. Um, but you know, spent a couple of couple of days with him, a bit of time with him, um, and just to see what a great person he was, and that was that was a, a great day for a lot of us. You know, who were young players at the time, maybe not expecting to be around the squad, around the first team. We got this opportunity to go to South Africa, a lot of young players, and uh, we weren't going to turn that one down because it was an incredible trip and one that I always think, think well of.
Okay, okay fair enough. I, I, I was, uh, you know, fortunate enough to work with uh, John Buns uh, a few years ago. Uh, I got to ask you this question. Who is more entertaining in the dressing room? Was it Razor or was it Buns? Um, is it on or off the pitch, this? <laughs> <laughs> because if it's, let's get this right. If it's on the pitch, then yeah. I'd have to say Johnny Barnes because, you know, <laughs> John, yeah. John was an incredible player and, you know, a real inspiration for me, um, lucky enough to play with him as, as, a young, as a young player. And John was was led by example by the way he played. He was a brilliant person, great all-round guy, likes to help everybody out. Brilliant, brilliant player. I mean, he never used to give the ball away. If you, if you, if you, I used to think about John in training. Maybe once every couple of weeks he might give the ball away. That's how good he was, John Barnes, at that. And this was towards the end of his career. So, I, you know, players who played with John right at the pinnacle of his career got to see someone really special because we've seen him, a special player um, who was, you know, towards the end of his career. But this player must have been incredible to play with because he had everything. Um, and it was a great honour to play with someone like John because he's such a good guy as well. If you know anyone who knows John, um, around the world, he's, he's met, he meets so many people. To be honest. So he's yep. such a lovely fella, and he's one. He's an inspirational guy that we all like to be around, and I think that's the best compliment I can give John. Very humble man, very learned man, and he loves trying street food. That's a true story. <laughs> but going back to your, was he your ex uh, roommate, uh, Neil Roddick? Yeah, Razor was my, my was my roommate. Yeah, for, um, for quite a number of years, good and bad. Good and bad. Let's stick with the good and. Bad, unfortunately, because you mentioned yeah. that uh, he, he's going through a bad time in terms of his health. You've spoken to him lately, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good friends with, 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 with Razor. And um, I think it's important, especially at this time, that we are friends to people, to each other more, more than what we've ever done this, you know. And um, I think it's so important that we do talk and we do, we do get around each other, especially people in my kind of position who... At the moment, especially, it's not a lot of work for anybody, so everyone's looking for work. And, you know, I think just being around anybody, I, that's what I've tried to do. Like, you guys, I have an interview with you guys, and then, you know, maybe I'll just speak to Razor or speak to one of my friends, and we don't have to talk about anything important. It's just it's just touching base with people. And I think for someone like Neil at the moment, Razor, as I call him, it's, it's so important that you've got your friends around you. I know he has, and we need to keep doing that because that's the one thing that we can all do more of going forward. And I think it's so important, especially the mental health issues as well, you know, people are dealing with in, in all aspects around the world. I think we've, we've all got a huge part to play in this at the moment. And I believe going forward that, you know, all of us are going to need some help with, with a little bit of the mental health issues. I certainly, you know, have struggled a little bit um, with what's happened to me. And it's very important that we do share this, these things with each other. And, I, and I've been doing that. I have a couple of guys that I speak to who are going through similar situations to me, who've had the same illnesses as me. Um, yep. And these guys are very inspirational. It doesn't matter if they played sport or played football. These guys that I speak to inspire me because they are, I call it the next level. They're, they're where I want to be. I'm inspiring to be as, as, as good as these guys These guys are. And some of these guys are normal lads who work in normal jobs, but they've got yeah. this drive. They've got a drive, and I want that drive now going forward because that's what's going to that's what's going to drive me and my family to to a better life now going forward as well. It's it's such an eye opener, uh, Dom, because you know you mentioned that for a person such as yourself, you have accomplished so much. And there's this myth that surrounds footballers that they are indestructible, that they mm -hmm. can't feel any of these things. You've seen it with uh, Aaron Lennon when he was at Everton. You're talking about it yourself. Do more footballers need to come out and talk about this and bring about awareness that they do need help? And if they do need help, do they get it from the likes of the PFA? Because I'm not aware of it. I don't think a lot of people outside of football understand that relationship between former footballers and the PFA. Are, are they to, there to help you and pe people such as you? Yeah, there is. There is a lot of help there, um, from the PFA. I think um, it's underrated. The, the help but it's it's for mixed things isn't it some people might be going in because they've got a problem with drink or people might be going into the problem for gambling it's so many different issues that they have to cover with the pfa um and even myself with my illness you know sometimes or well, somebody will contact you is there anything you need what how can we help you and your family going forward because everybody has needs um especially when you've had a, a serious illness but i think in general it's something that we have to be um really um thankful for that 
we have got somebody like the PFA. I know there's mixed reviews from the PFA, and, I, and I've had ups and downs with them myself going forward. But I can say that they did help me when when, when it was needed. You know, six months ago, um, I got some some messages and some uh, WhatsApp from certain people, and it was just nice to hear there is a little bit of help out there. Um, can more be done? I'm sure. I'm sure more can be done everywhere to help all the all the people who need it. And I think that's. And as an ongoing thing, I think if we've got more more people who've been in this position, ex-players, I think we need to get more of them working for the PFA or working for people like that who know the game uh, and know different elements of it. You know, like you say, with gambling, it can be anything. It could be, you know, people struggling to, um, for, for mental health or anything. I think it's a, it's a mixture of everything that we have to try and come together. And it's a really difficult job for the PFA at the moment. Um but it's one that we have to really grab hold of because, you know, I think with mental health, we've seen it with Paul Merson, you know, we've seen in interviews lately, Paul's been struggling and, and, and he's wow. doing well at the moment. So, so there is, there is, um, there's a lot of things out there at the moment, <clears throat> but I do think the PFA are helping. Um, I know, I know at times people won't think that's the case, but I can tell you firsthand that they do help and they have, they've helped me quite a bit with my recovery. I think the right thing, uh, would be, in my humble and correct opinion, would be like the likes of the PFA getting in touch with you, Dom, and getting you to get in touch with all these players who need, like you mentioned, just someone to talk to. Oh, would you be up for the job if uh, they asked you, not as a, a senior level, but just to be in the organization, just to be there, to be a part of the team and just be there for somebody? Yeah, I mean, obviously, this moment in time... Um... I have to concentrate on my, my rehab and moving forward. But yeah, I think I think any job like that would would interest any footballer because it's something we all care about and we all want that to improve. We all want the best for all our clubs going forward. So I think yeah, I think you know there's going to have to be a lot of phone calls and a lot of chatting going on with every aspect of the sport at the moment. I mean, look at you know with the, with the TV rights and stuff, things are going to change so much. There's a lot of things we have to um, address at the moment. But I think going forward. Um, I think the, the PFA have, have got a huge responsibility now because it's such a tough job to do and to get somebody in the right position to move the PFA forward is going to be very, very tough. And Dave, if, if he is the person to do that, he's got a lot, he's got a lot to do to, uh, to get to where we need to be. I was talking about you, Dom, and I would suggest that they hire you at least just for the time being, from your home, just talk to the players that need to be spoken to, just to give them, you know, a, a shoulder to lean on. Would you be up for yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I love my football and I love talking about football and I love trying to... I think when something happens to you, very serious like it did to me, and, you know, I was close to losing my life, luckily I uh, managed to get that back. I think looking forward now, any opportunity that's going to help other people, uh, and also help myself because you have to you have to say that as well. So at time because you can only help yourself um, as well by helping others. So I think to myself, yeah, me going forward now is is about collectively. Um, yeah, I'd like to help um, anyone who needs a bit of help. I mean, and that phone call for me, you know, like to Razor and people like that who need a little bit of help out there, just just pick up the phone and, and yeah. have a call. Ring 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 you, not me. <laughs> will do, my friend. It's been an absolute pleasure, Dom. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're an absolute inspiration, my friend. You're a true warrior. Get better soon, and I hope you and I will be seeing each other in person very soon. Stay safe and stay home, my brother. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate that. Top man. Thank you. All right. Don't forget to subscribe, like uh, on our YouTube channel, of course, our Facebook page, and our Instagram account. Till the next time, take care.